Summer 2015, it's time to continue round two, heat two. We have Ignite coming up against Vortex. We're jumping in mid-series. Uh, this is as our attempt as best as possible to include as many games as we can per round. And Ignite versus Vortex, I think this one's pretty cool because I think they're both underrated players by the community. And I'm joined right now on the desk by Hyped and Lothar. Uh, Hyped, you're here. Well, you didn't actually get through the rounds really efficiently. You had the Nyria experience yeah, where you went 0-2 apparently. Yeah. I'm trying to forget about it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, I wanted to announce the stream of what's going on, too. Um, how, how did your tournament experience go so far? Um, it's pretty cool. I like the... I don't, I'm not sure if I like the format, but I like that there's different formats. And so when I'm preparing decks, it's like a whole different uh, like process challenge. than yeah. when you're thinking of just, I'm, oh, I'm just going to play a handful of pros. I'm going uh, to be against this guy first. I'll tune my decks a little bit towards him. Right. But it's kind of cool when there's like a whole 128 players. You don't know who you're going to get. Yeah, for sure. Well, I mean, y you still have the opportunity to play through your matches, but are you going to play any more at all? Oh, I guess it depends on who I'm up against. Right? Okay. You might ruin some tournaments, right? If you want to do that. Yeah. Okay. Well, you can still go 5 2 and, you know, get a decent result so you can brag. Well, yeah. I was 5 2 at the first major Swiss tournament, so it's not so bad, right? Yeah. Maybe not top 8, but top 16. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Top 16 is not better than 128. Sure. Okay. I'll play it out. All There's right. always Gosu Gamer points on the yeah. line. Yeah. So. For sure. Oh, yeah. There it is. Grab those go support. There's a lot of points. There's also uh, good rank standings here for uh, Ignite and Vortex. Both players really want to be able to take this series. I think they're 0 1, right? Yeah, they're 0 they're one. Zero 1. So they um, need to uh, win this for elimination Let's purposes. And already we're going to get off to the first game. No crease for Ignite this time around. That was the class that he surprised everybody at Sea Story Cup, his last breakout performance. Can he follow it up this time? In the meantime, I will check if they are for sure 0 1. Yeah, we'll, we'll go ahead and double check that. Patron mirror, uh, mirrors, but we do see a shield slam, which implies that Ignite is playing the shield block list, which is starting to gain popularity. What do, what do you think about that list, Hyped? Uh, that's pretty good. I'm not sure which one's much favored in the mirror, but I know that um, some people like to throw a brawl in their uh, shield slam list, which I wouldn't be surprised to see Ignite in, because I know uh, Impact, his, his new teammate, plays Brawl on his Patron Warrior, and that's how he was able to get a win against Zele. Mm -hmm. okay. So I wouldn't be surprised to see it in Ignite's list as well, which will give him a huge edge in this Oh, game. Impact uh, beat Zoe? Yeah. Okay, cool. Thanks so to a Brawl, mostly. It came down to the last match, 2 versus 2, Patron versus Patron, and he hit a huge Brawl. Yeah, I mean, that's what kind of happens in Mirrors, right? You need to get a little luckier than Are your you opponent. You think it's worth it to include the Brawl in a Patron deck? It's kind of like counterproductive, right? I, I like the idea. I didn't include it myself, but I like mm -hmm. the idea. So both players here have decent opening hands. You're okay both cycling have this Acolyte, though? Hey, I yeah, guess you don't have anything else to do. Yeah. yeah. Kind of sucks that you can't draw more than one from the Acolyte of Pain, that's for right. sure. Well, I mean, that's the idea. Like, in Control Warrior Mirrors back in the day, it'd be, like, really foolish to let your Acolyte get yeah, only one like, card. It's like lose a game instantly, almost. Every yeah, well, you just time. fall behind in control games because control is all about lining up card removal, putting out threats. Patron's a little bit different. It's paced very erratically. Sometimes the game slows down to a, a crawl and your armor up passing both. <laughs> or sometimes you're both throwing out as much as you can on the board. Depends on the hands. Well, you have to like play your patrons first to ensure you're ahead of the game. Yeah, yeah. So Effective. if that happens and someone has an, like a brawl, like you said, someone has a brawl, then it, he gets back into the game, especially if he has already sure. a weapon on the board. So it, it can also, um, when someone is playing like a weapon on the board when he didn't have a need to, it can also indicate that he's set up, making a setup for a brawl, an example. For sure, you know, for sure. Can change some de decisions. I mean, I don't mind uh, Vortex's position here. Like, if you t evaluate, he's got card draw, and that's pretty decisive factor when your opponent doesn't really have anything to do other than a patron on turn five. Yep. He can execute his opponent's acolyte. That's probably the, the most important thing. He has the Emperor, but um, no real threats in the hand to actually play the, the Emperor for now. And playing Emperor just to be killed by some really not important minions, it's not something that you want to do. Definitely. You want to hit at least like two, three, four what? combo cards, and all he has is basically the patron. Four combo cards. It's like insane. Yeah. It's like Almost win a game. Well, like two combo cards and then two useful cards. Like, execute's still good on your combo turn. That's true. So what about Slam now? So you Slam the Armorsmith? Yeah, well, you have to cycle, right? Right. 
I mean, drawing is important, and then you can execute the Acolyte. Just deny that card draw. I don't, I don't think armor count really matters too much. Probably not. Probably not. So now he has at least one, um, one part of the combo, which is the Warson Commander, because the pattern is when you play a mirror, it's not as important as in other games when you have to, to charge it, right? Yeah. In this, in this uh, case, you just play the patterns to the board when you can ensure that you will get a lot of them and that's it. Because the, probably the chart won't matter at all, but the chart will matter for floating berserkers because those are pushing the game to the limit. Right? Exactly. Usually going for an OTK with one or two of those. And yeah. then the, also the Grom to help you finish off. Yeah. And the patterns are just a threat that y the opponent has, has to deal as soon as possible, so he will be depleting his resources for that. And Do normally super hard to deal with, but with the bra hopefully Ignite can pick up the Brawl before he dies here. Looks like the game's going to go on for quite a while, though. Yeah, it's not one of those games yet where you rush out the Grim Patron as fast as you can, because there's not a lot of synergy there. You look at Vortex's hand, it's he only has... In rage, yeah, yeah, only in Rain Rage, in Rage, and Ignite. I mean, he's got some cards, and he you know, actually has it next turn with a big combo opportunity. But he still has to wait till next turn, you know, his opponent might have a board before then. Throwing Berserker, well, that's uh, not a good draw at all in this situation. Well, you could have thought about maybe dropping it, right? Mm -hmm. But you didn't see any Death Spite yet. Right. So that's losing a 3-4 Frothing Berserker or 4-4 four four Frothing Berserker without doing much work here is like really bad. Is No Mission Venner, it feels like a pretty big liability in this matchup considering it's 2 attack and 4 health body is perfect for Grim yeah. Patient to double dip mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. add the Frothing damage. To be honest, I dislike this card right. really much when it comes to, uh, t to building a deck with patrons. Yeah. I mean... Vortex is even contemplating pushing in this armor smith because again, same reason. It's a liability. My opponent just played Emperor Thorson. If he had the uh, the Warsong Commander and the Grim Patron, I need to minimize as much as I can this board's impact uh, mm -hmm. against me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it looks like he goes for it. He trades the armor smith in there. God damn, it's loud here, right? Yeah. Well, I mean, people don't really who are watching the stream might not even really understand it, but DreamHack's like a party. It's a celebration. There's actually an entire hall dedicated to just concerts. And yeah, that's true. It, you know, there's other people playing games too. There's actually like, you know, 10,000 plus people here for the BYOC where they just game for 48 hours. And it's summer, so the sun never sets. And they play solitaire. They actually do, really. They watch anime too. Yeah, they do. They <laughs> literally do anything. Just except sleep. That's kind of like the... <laughs> I mean, I really wish DreamHack was around when I was a kid. Yeah, I, I guess that's... Um, Pretty sure I would have turned out the exact same way. Maybe even happier as a person. That, that's a common opinion now. I would do the same. Like <laughs> binge gaming when I was 18 yeah. or 17. Yeah, you know. Better than whatever I was doing when I was 18. <laughs> Try humping my mattress or something. <laughs> <laughs> 18 seems a little old for that, but... <laughs> <sure>. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. There it is. Well, in the meantime, there's like a four patrons on Yeah, there. he's even shield slamming for one, which just happens to be perfect to create another Grim Patron. But does it make any sense to do it? Hey, I thought the rule was whoever gets the most patrons on the board first wins. Yeah, but now it's full full board. Yeah. Oh yeah, now you can't create other patrons unless you suicide something first. I think Knight must be pretty confident that Vortex is not playing Brawl himself. It's an all-in, essentially. Yeah, that's like, like a what super else? I mean, in. he gets a huge battle rage next turn, but if this doesn't work out, I mean, he, he has nothing. He has even the weapon, so a brawl in this situation yeah, would be perfect. perfect. Yeah. But, as most in the situations when you play Patron, when you draw brawl, it's like, okay, I don't need that card at all. Right. But it's only, <laughs> only, only usable when it's like a scenario. scenario or when you play against a handlock, maybe. Right. What? What do you even do here, Hype? This looks so, like, impossible at this point. Do you just kill off the wars? Like, the war song is usually the root of the problem because it creates more patrons, but there's but also enough pressure damage. that you might die. That's 19 damage. Yeah, he's counting it up. He has to, like, inner rage some of the 1-3 one, one, ones. Oh, that's rough. What about inner rage, inner rage conceit? That sounds pretty good. I like it. Yeah. Seems like the most reasonable line to play. Why not um, defrauding Berserker this turn? Yeah, would have been at least able to contest two. Yeah, then you can clear more minions. Yeah, I, I, th I think it just. 
I mean, he still move. can. He can Cloudy Berserker in a rage. The, but it will uh, have been one. already a 4 4. Yeah. Well, I mean, the 4 4 three versus 3 4 doesn't really make it too much of a difference. It still kills off any Grim Page that trades into it. It's just, you know that the Frothing Berserker will get traded into the 5-2 the instead of the 3-3s. Three well, so. the Ammo Smith doesn't really do much also. Well, that's 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 just playing yeah. bad, <laughs> I, well, I guess, right? Because now you, yeah. you spawn more patrons from the Frothing Berserker. Well, I mean, if he has one damage, he dies. I mean, Vortex knows this is a really bad situation, so he just says, I need this inner rage in order to, well, to win. Battle rage for Death Spite, There's right? four cards he needs to draw he has one like damage. He has, 10 cards in the deck left. No, wait. What was it? 16? It's 16, and his bonus at 17. Well, okay. Never mind, then. I uh, just miscounted by, like, 6. <laughs> well, if you use battle rage, he can draw into <laughs> any weapon at this point. Wait, how much damage is that? It's... 3, 8, 11, 14, 16. Yeah, why, why didn't he do that? Oh, he's going for maximum battle rage. Yeah. To be honest, I didn't like that. I, I would like to just draw four cards and just go for lethal, right? Well, why not draw a full hand? This is insane. Watch the card slide all the way to the left. Yu-Gi-Oh style. It's going to be epic shift. Wait for it. Shoot! You're awesome, Commander. Oh, Inner Rage. That was the one damage that he needed. Yeah. The Inner Rage. Yeah, I mean, the same board as he did last time that Vortex couldn't deal with. So he, he's still gonna win. Like yeah. Spoiler alert. But why delayed when? So you can see more deck, uh, more cards out of your no opponent. opponent. He would just yeah. concede. All right. Fair enough. But he didn't concede last turn when he should have conceded. So I think Vortex plays Brawl because look at his smile. He was like, ah, oh, I didn't draw it. Right? Yeah, that's a, that's a good point. In fact, uh, maybe that ends up being the case here. That's still, it's still hard to make that exact read, but you can definitely extrapolate. Well, he, he, he could have attacked into the Acolyte with Pain to see another card. Because it will oh, have, have been, been, you know, okay. yeah, burnt. But when you win the deck, it's gone anyways. Yeah, it's but then you can, you know, tell your teammates what he's playing. <laughs> That's right. This is a 1-1 series, by the way. Uh, Vortex did take the first game, and we're that's why we were trying to get involved. We were jumping in mid-series. And now we go Hunter versus Patron from Vortex. That's, that's really curious why people are not changing decks in Conquest, right? They just tend to stick to one deck. Well, some people are. I mean, depends on how the format is. I know some people actually take a randomizer or something, like a die yeah. or a coin. I was doing that at Dreamhack Bucharest. I had uh, uh, yeah, dice and with and me and always rolling dice. That's one of your best results of recent times too, right? Yeah. We you top four, so that was really Top sick. three. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. Third, fourth. Fourth, third slash fourth, right? <laughs> and, uh, I lost to the champions, you know, yeah. in the semifinals. All right. One it is a mid-range hunter. Guns are... In this particular matchup, I really like to have the uh, Freezing Trap in my opening hand. Because it can steal so much tempo from your opponent. It's like basically yeah. better than oh, against yeah. Druid. Because you don't only steal tempo, but you also steal yeah. potential card draw. Hyped, what, what happened to the Hybrid Hunter? Why, why are people stop playing that? Because that was really popular just a couple weeks ago. Oh, don't, there's still a handful of those. I see, I'm seeing a lot of Wolf right. Rider. And yeah. we're not even sure this isn't a Hybrid. We haven't seen a Houndmaster. We haven't seen a Web Spinner. Right. So it could very well be hybrid. Why do you think it's fallen off in popularity, though, compared to where it was? Is it just because people got used to what to expect from that and then adjusted their play style and cards? I think it's still pretty popular. But some people like to go a little bit faster with the Face Hunter to try to beat the Hybrid Hunters. And I'm not sure exactly what the thinking is of uh, going slower with the Midrange Hunter. Um, except for maybe they figure it might be a little bit more consistent against Patron. What's the priority from now, though? Like now, if you're the hunter here, you generally want to apply better pressure against the the warrior. But if you trade both of these into the war song, it feels kind of no. like a stop in momentum. I think that's the play for freezing trap here. Yeah, the freezing trap. There will be no charge be. minion yet, and then you play. On turn 4, you played Palto Shredder, right? And it, there was no weapon. You know that, right? So, potentially, your, your Palto Shredder uh, can trade for the Throating Berserker 
if he won't be popped back into the hand, right? Un unless, of course, there will be some damage to the minions that are left on the board. But Yeah, I don't mind it. I don't mind it at all. Yeah, but at the same time, open board, animal companion, into pilot shutter, into coin, savannah, when you have a freezing trap up, is really hard to deal with with the warrior. Like, I can't even yeah. think of a way to deal with it without some sort of crazy combo, which it's too early True. for. Oh, you're right. The curve, again, we're talking about how mid-range hunter is empowered by the curve carried into the mid-game because they need to leverage the board in order to continue their advantage through kill commands. If they're using kill commands defensively, that's often a bad sign that, you know, mid-range hunter is about to lose and it's like doing a Hail Mary play. But when Quick Shot and you know other cards in his hand that he'll be drawing luxuriously, that'll be so significant for the mid range hunter if he can uh, continue that momentum. Now that said, uh, this this freezing trap end up popping back, but now the same problem exists. You play the uh, the shredder here, but the frothing still is uncontested on the board. Well, now there will be wow, well, I can go on. There you go, Frodan. Here you go with your question. I had no idea that he was playing hybrid. That was just a question. It was just an inquiry because we've seen several mid-range hunters throughout the day here so far. That's really oh. lucky to draw the death spite. Like he needed one of the weapons right now this turn. Otherwise, his um, furling berserk will be All right, have that really bad. Too. <clears throat> yeah, two attack, less than three health. So, furling berserker is again a legitimate threat. 5-2, there's also no difference for the hunt if the minion is like 5-2, 5-1, or 5-3. Because it dies to anything. Well, okay, apart from Glaive Zuka. That's the only damage sure. that deals less than uh, less than 3, right? Knife jugglers, I guess, if you count those, but... Huffer? It's always Huffer. You know, the, the patron's taken some significant damage, and... If he ends up using... Execute on this because he doesn't want to take the damage. Then the high main becomes more powerful. Mm, but we have battle rage, right? So he think he thinks about playing Thrilling Berserker here. Maybe it's not that bad. Thrilling Berserker attack face and Oof. execute. Well, this is really a risky decision. It's it's a painful, but I think it ends up being correct because of the execute in hand, and he knows that turn six is the high main play. Yeah, so now he has exec execute activation, but still he can't really deal with the hyenas. Yeah. He was looking for something better, but he didn't quite but get it. But for what? Well, he has no no uh, right. whirlwind in hand, so he had... The, here's, a, the, here's a caster term I'll teach you guys, which you can use for the rest of your lives. Okay. The question is, he did the play... But at what cost? There you go, Lothar. Now you try it. He did the play, but at what cost? Perfect. I'm so proud of you, man. Who said that in the original quote? <laughs> You're like half intelligible now. It's great. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're, you're doing fantastic, buddy. I mean, kind of looking at how here this is going on, um, you have that charge, so you can actually deal with the hyenas a little bit here. Well, with one. But you can still uh, generate uh, and yeah, generate armor, I have so it's not so both. bad. Yeah. And you're still gaining a little bit of armor, which is important. But yep. then you still haven't seen the big burst damage like the kill command, so you're having that in the back of your mind. But... Hunter can't really leave uh, the Walson commander here on board. So what he has to do to, is to, unless he kills his opponent, of course, he has to deal with the Walson commander because it's so threatening, right? Yeah, yeah they have for no sure. efficient way to deal with it outside of a bow. The three HP is really nice. Well, uh, well, there's an abusive surgeon, right? Just see, how much damage does he have if this is Huffer? Oh, it sorry, is on the high run. When Huffer. this is Huffer, I should have clarified. He's still 7 off, even what? if he coins the Arcane Golem this turn, so he'll probably go with the Hero Power. Yeah. I wouldn't be surprised if he coins the Music Sergeant. And kills off the Warsong Commander. I think he has to. It's too much of a threat with yep. um, any minion with 3 attacker lives coming out with charge. That just opens up so much possibility for clearing, defense, especially with Armor Smith alive. And, like to say, an example, a second yeah. weapon and a uh, free pirate. Yeah, that's true. Hey, I mean, that, that's also a legitimate question, too. Like, how long will he let this uh, Armorsmith live? Oh, oh, man, wow. he goes actually the opposite direction. He takes out the Armorsmith and pushes for damage on face. It's interesting. 
So what about now attacking with the Warson Commander to the Hyena and play Battle Rage? You can draw your Wiwins. Two Wiwins. <laughs> that would be perfect. Well, you can <laughs> actually do it on uh, Abusive Sergeant first and then execute the 2-1 at worst case scenario. Mm, that's a good point. Right. Because the what if he doesn't draw anything that he can play? It's useful. Yeah, that's that was a very good point. Yeah, I mean it's a small difference, but it might end up becoming the the, the factor in another game because this game looks like he's just gonna die to an arcane golem. Three, four, seven. Wait, that's nine damage. That's lethal on board if he plays that. Yeah, yeah. He's so for, I'm not sure exactly what he's looking for, but the Grom would have bumped him up to ten HP. He could have taken out the Huffer and left the knife juggler on board to potentially give you more armor with the knives. So what was the knowing, knowing how this ended up panning out? What was the optimal play? Um, I like Grom on? into the Huffer and leave the Knife Juggler up. Gotcha. Well, this ends up costing him, and Ignite takes a 2-1 lead. Now, that's, again, this is for your tournament life. This is not just to advance higher into into Swiss. They can still go both 5-2. Yeah, 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 we make that point a lot, and you're absolutely correct. It's just that now you know you're not guaranteed into the top into eight. The top yeah. eight. So, effectively, this is where your tournament, quote, ends. But, I mean, but part of the fun of Swiss is you get to play the rounds and, you know, you're d you don't fly all the way here to Sweden just to play two matches. Yeah. Or, like, to Bucharest at the first one and play one. Single <laughs> elimination, best of three. <laughs> yeah. One in a bracket. Those were humble times. I mean, even a year ago at DreamHack Summer, we were still playing best of three Hearthstone. Yeah. But um, that was double elimination. No, it was single elimination. Was no, it? it was groups. It was groups into single no, elimination. No, I mean the open qualifier because I was playing in the open qualifier. Oh, the BYOC. It was double that elimination. Was double that was double elimination. Yeah, 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 that was double elimination. Yeah. I remember because you, Kit Kats, and Forsen made deep runs. Yeah, all we of were all, all of us were one off to advance to the main event. This is pretty huge. Ignite kept the mirror image, even though it's really low quality, because he wanted to protect his sorcerer's apprentice from fire wax, but. Vortex has the perfect answer with the super efficient minion minions that are just going to clear the mirror images over two turns. I think he thinks about slam, but I, I would agree more with Duskmaster, definitely. Yeah. I, I mean, the the cheap spell is definitely is something you want to take care of too. It's it's so much tempo. If your opponent gets an unstable portal for one, that means they get behind, they get ahead by two. Pretty crazy. And A9 obviously doesn't have a play. The play is to ping something with the hero power. <laughs> and he doesn't want to ping his face because of right. the battle rage, right? <laughs> that's, that's a good point. So, I mean, he's also trying to make it believe like he might have another play. Just yeah, that's, maybe that's taking that 5 yeah. to 10 seconds just to implement an advantage. I guess he, he can just pass the turn here because pinging anything enables battle rage. So in this case... Oh, yeah, that'd be hilarious. Well, he didn't do that. No, I mean, it's one of those things where, you know, you understand what you're doing, the risks of it. That's so big, the fact that Temple Mage missed an entire turn on three. Well, it's not Tempo for them, definitely. Anti-Tempo. Unstable portal, but you can't afford to play that round uh, right now. At yeah. least he has a decent uh, end Next game. Turn. Next turn. What's, th what's the best unstable portal against Patron? Harrison Jones? That's a pretty good one. It is a really good one. Earth uh, Elemental's pretty good. They don't have to execute. Water Elemental? Earth yeah, Elemental. Yeah, yeah. Is that Water mean, Elemental, too. If we're talking about, like, big taunt minions, then we can go with, like, the lump, the Volcanic Lumberer. Nice. <laughs> or the Iron Bark Protector, another big Druid taunt. Yep. I hope it's Deathwing. Deathwing is Because Deathwing useless, clears all right? the patrons. Well, for seven mana. Yeah. And clears their hands too. Yeah. That was Mirror Entity, right? Yeah. Mirror Entity on turn five is to see if you can catch a patron, but... For sure, really everyone will fall for that. Everyone's like, well, you know, you're not <laughs> fooling anybody with that secret, <laughs> Mr. Yeah. Mage. All right. Uh, let's that was a patron. Yeah, he has the patron and an acolyte, both well, of which are a little awkward to deal with. And you don't want to give your opponent too many cards, but well, acolyte's definitely okay, the lesser of right? two evils. Yeah. yeah. One is okay, I guess. Because you can then um, the Taskmaster, the uh, the um, Norwegian Inventor, trade into Acolyte of Pain. Right. 
Wait, wait, wait. Do you need to buff your Nomogen event to here? We can trade into the Yeti. But do you have an Execute? Right. I think he wants to save the ex he, see, he saw that Ignite missed a few turns, and he figures he's going to have to execute something Yeah, big. that's a good point. And that's why he gets to see a spare part, although it looks like he didn't care about the spare part. Yeah, what is Time Reminder going to do? Not really anything. Maybe Cool Taskmaster has some usage. Well, maybe he can do a Warsong turn, like a small Warsong turn, then bring the Warsong back. Oh, that's good utility. I like that. Well, he can always Time Rewind one of the patrons to have like the same card in hand. Right. Oh, that's true, yeah. Like, you can take one of the 1 HP ones yeah, back. Yeah, exactly. No Death Spite will be perfect this turn. Yeah, to, to clear the Drake pretty efficiently is oh, ideal. There's no, there's no Death Spite. So, this turn, well, I guess it's an Inner Rage on uh, Acolyte of Pain. And I, I think you don't want to play Furling Berserker first, because if you draw Death Spite, then it's basically useless draw, right? If you draw Fear War X, and it's kind of okay. He didn't draw. Wow. Yeah, I'm surprised. You have to imagine that one of the seven jobs is coming down soon from Ignite. And he has no real way to deal with Dr. Boom? You're saying uh, Ignite doesn't? Or Vortex? Because they, they both have Boom. Okay. Yeah. yeah he's, well, I mean, he's got to Execute. Hmm. Well, so that can't like deal he wanted boom to execute the yeah, Azure Drake. No, no, no. I, I was talking about um, inner raging your acolyte of pain yeah, just like to get play. like additional card draw. We saw the first card was basically trash, but if the second one was a weapon, that would put him really ahead at, at least this right. turn. So we can deal with the huge minion on next th next turn, like with Doctor Boom. The the bombs would be left, but you know, I that mean, doesn't really matter. The Dread Corsair did challenge Drake and ultimately took it down, which was according to plan. Battle Rage. Well, okay, the draw will be. It useless. seems super risky, though. Against uh, yeah. Tempo Mage, you haven't seen any Flame Cannons or Frost Bolts yet. No, I, I completely agree. I'm just saying but that. It worked out. It worked, it worked out. okay. You can't always be results based in Hearthstone, though. Well, if you if you want to disrupt your opponent's plan to play on the curve, then the the, the Pirate was okay, right? But uh, then, as we saw the situation, he just wanted to stay on curve, so he played Doctor Boom and sacrificed the, the minion that he had on board. Otherwise, he would have to sacrifice the curve and play like a four, five mana minion. Would yeah. be, you know, I lesser agree. than lesser than Doctor Boom. All right. Well, I'm seeing double Doctor Boom versus Doctor Boom. You sure one is golden? The purse. Oh, you're right. That one's strictly superior. His boom bots are gonna hit for four. And then the non-golden boom bots hit for one. I think that's how and it works, right? And the boom bots will hit Dr. Boom and kill it. You're right. Yeah. But the, the freezing coolant is such a, such a purple yeah, that will turn sick. the game around here. That is, that's pretty amazing. Oh, well, see, it hits for four. <laughs> yeah. That's I don't know works. why you're laughing. It's kind of the exact same thing that's going to happen. And now he has a guarantee that his opponent's boom bot won't kill his. So he can trade boom bots and then go into the Doctor Boom, and then. But then he wants it. to freeze the boom uh, the, the Doctor Boom, right? Oh, you're right. See, look at that! I the told double you. Force. Why are you confused? This is kind of what happens. Yeah, Arstone sorry, sorry. I'm, I'm really sorry. Win. Yeah. I'm, so, I'm really sorry. I'm, I feel humbled now because um, I know the ways yeah. now. Hype's not laughing because he's seen that happen to him way too many times. Oh yeah, that's the worst. I uh, I was trying out Rend Blackhound the other day on my Rogue. Mm -hmm. So the guy plays Dr. Boom, I hear a power of bomb, I rend Dr. Boom, next turn, so he has just a Boom Bot on board against my 8-4. <laughs> he does his whole turn, and then at the very uh. end of the turn, when he's out of mana, he's like, I'll go for it. He goes for it, he hits it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah well, of course I knew goes. where this yeah. was going. <laughs> but the rend black and animation is just so cool, uh. like, exhibit style. Yeah. I, I can appreciate this move. This is like, a, well, there's two threats you want to deal with, so you, you have to execute both in a way. Um... I mean, and it is a Tempo Mage play, so I like it. Considering that he has also Sorcerer's Apprentice and two Fireballs in hand, like, he's got a lot of potential with this with this card in uh, Ignite's side. And Vortex, he's struggling. Huh. Okay, so you execute Antonius for sure. I was thinking about Acolyte of Pain, pinging it with Inner Rage, draw it for... Um, but then Battle Rage, draw for right. additional Execute and Whirlwind. Because I don't see him winning in this situation if he just leaves both minions on board. 
Yeah. He knows that there's one tough. fireball in hand, so what do you want to do with this? There's like 14 damage from Dr. Boom. If you don't deal, deal with it immediately, you lose anyway. Right. Looks like he cast everything but the two fireballs. Yeah, I think so. First. Well, this will be um, for yeah, five mana. Blue uh, Horror. Well, kind of works. Bad. I mean, it's pretty susceptible to Grimpage and stuff, but... Oh! Third fireball, look at that. I mean, you still can do the hype play where you play everything except the fireballs. I yeah. guess you well, can this play point, one. You don't really want to play the mana worm, and the mirror M entity doesn't really do that much. So yeah, I, th I like the fireball a lot better here. Yeah. yeah. Because next turn it's double fireballs ping. That's certain damage. I guess that's game over. Yeah, guaranteed. Now there has to be an amazing sequence of cards in order for Warrior to win here, and it involves like picking up Warsong Commander. Armor Smith and Armor Smith and execute well, and whirlwind. I was thinking like if he got worse on Commander, there's a lot of minions on board. So if he picked up whirlwind with like acolyte of pain, that was the worst right, there it is. So he can go for a battle rage. After is he going to trade the Doctor Boom into something and then go for a battle rage? Maybe. I mean, there's a lot of potential with um. With what's been given here, just you have to make sure to sequence it correctly. You can get the patrons going too, as well. Yeah, it makes the most sense. It's like the safest play for sure. Death spell a little too late to the party. Uh, very late. That that's gonna wrap it up here. Um, yep. The double fireball is not what Vortex is expecting. He thinks his opponent has seven damage, was based off one extra fireball, but he won't anticipate. The other one that's been drawn. So Ignite striking Actually, gold here, being able to get both of his fireballs and the Antonitis. Ignite definitely yep. should have played the fireball from the middle, not the new one. Because if he was tracking properly, he would know he has two. Yeah, that's a, that's also a good point. Or was one just he had the first one from a long time ago. Either yeah, way, he yeah, should have yeah, played yeah. the Antonitis fireball. Right. No matter what. Right. It's not so important, but sometimes you lose a match because of that. Yes. It's like one in one hundred. Yeah, right? and it, I mean, it, it might just, have been it just, just has to happen once. Yeah. yeah. Well, well done. Ignite ends up taking the series. He's immediately joining us for a uh, quick talk. You didn't pull up the chair, so you're just going to tower over us, Shh, small people. Well, we have a chair right there, right? I mean, we could stand up. We could stand up, but it's probably around the same height disproportion anyways. Ignite's, <laughs> you know, one lanky dude. <laughs> All right, we're going to pull him up. Uh, so that wraps up round number two. Ignite, how are you feeling? It looks like you staved off elimination for now. Uh, well, yeah, I was, pretty feeling, uh, I was feeling pretty beat up because I lost round one and was on the verge of losing already. Um, and I started 0-1 versus Vortex, even. But I managed to turn around the game, and I got pretty lucky in the Temple Mage versus Patron, which allowed me to take the series, fortunately. Yeah. Uh, how, how is everything going, by the way? Um, you're on a new team now, right? Yeah, I joined Luminosity Gaming. Um, yeah. what, what, can you tell me more about them? Yeah. Luminosity Gaming signed Applejack. There was a, the their first acquisition, yeah. 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 And then they got in contact with me and Impacts, and they showed interest, and also showed interest in San Sifka, and it just came to happen. And now we're on the same team, and hopefully we'll, we'll be one of the top teams pretty soon. So how does it work with practice? Like, uh, you're different time zones, right? Okay, yeah, true. Um, first off, we signed, well, like, we've been on a team for almost a week, so we haven't actually practiced much. Only practiced with impact for this tournament. And the thing is, I sure I have, I'm European, but uh, I wake up pretty late, usually. My schedule's all twisted up. Gamer life. <laughs> <laughs> so I, like, uh, I end up talking a lot with, uh, with Josh, who is, uh, who is like six hours behind or so in Canada. So I actually end up talking a lot with him on Skype. Um, just need to also start talking more with uh, our other teammates, Sifka, to get the practice going between all three of us and get in sync. Gotcha. That's cool, man. Well, I'm glad to see that you are found a home. For a long time, Ignite's just teamless, performing pretty well, but, you know, no, no shirt suitors. guy, right? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> Sam, Sam and shirt guy. And, uh, you know, Auk and I, Soul Priest, <laughs> Valiant's chosen circle of healing that guy. Priest guy. <laughs> <laughs> that priest guy who tilted. Hype, do you have any uh, th questions or things you want to chat to Ignite about? Oh, just, uh, it was really cool to see that, um, that, Grim Patron Mirror, where it looked like you were super behind, and then you just pulled off the win. Yeah, yeah. I felt like I didn't have that spider or whirlwind or anything, but I kind of even traded the Smith. Obviously, yeah, did that right. well, but I was going to explode on that turn, and mm -hmm. I just still managed to do it. And then, also and I like shield slamming for one. 
Yeah. So we, he couldn't deal out with all of them. Yeah, we saw that. And then uh, also the Temple Mage versus Patron, it seemed like you were super behind. You didn't get any damage I in felt at super all. behind. And then you pulled um, I saw the opportunity to start going first with Boom. And I was actually, I was thinking about fireballing the Dr. Boom when I treated the Boom bot. So I was like, if I hit with a Boom bot on, the, on, the, on his Boom, I'm going to fireball it most likely and pop the minions. But I ended up not doing that. And I just thought I could push for seven, pop the Antonidas, freeze it, and force him to have an activator and two executes to yeah. pop both executes. And if he can't do that, he's probably going to take another yeah. seven. That was the turn when uh, we was wondering if uh, Vortex should have maybe played Acolyte of Pain, in a rage the Acolyte of Pain, because he had one execute and no other options to clean the board. And to, to cycle and maybe get the second execute with a whirlwind, yeah, because probably. then he could have cleared the whole board, maybe, and mm -hmm. somehow turn the game around again to his mm -hmm. favor, right? Because if he just left the Dr. Boom on, uh, on, his, uh, on your side, that was 14 points of damage. Yeah, definitely. So he was pretty unfortunate, though, that he couldn't deal with my Azure Drake with a weapon. He yeah, didn't have a weapon for though. that. And if he had Corsair for later on, he might have saved some, some health True. because of it. It it's was cool. like guaranteed four mana that he did have to spend on the turn yeah, when he yeah, played the Corsair, so it was like really off game. pretty hard for yeah. him. <laughs> All right, cool. Well, the last question I want to ask is that, uh, you know, you, you remind me of a few other players who are also very streaky. Based off your emotion, you can play really well, and sometimes, mm -hmm. you know, you can tilt. Uh, how do you feel right now? Do you feel, like, still pretty good? You're alive in day number one. You're going to the last round I'm of the day. I'm way more alive now after I have one, for sure. <laughs> um, and I hope I can get to 2 one in the next round so I can come back and play the rest tomorrow. All right, so you're feeling good then. Yeah, definitely right. my goal. Well, good luck in the next round. You're going to go to round three, which is currently being drawn at the moment. Mm -hmm. Also, partially why we're, we're taking our time with the interview. <laughs> Everyone's like, get to the next game. But the way Swiss <laughs> works is because they were the last match to finish, now we're uh, drawing all of the rounds for round number three. And we're going to see who plays. Yes, for hit one and hit two. For hit then, one and hit two. And then we have to make a gathering and pick the matches. Right, we exactly. We have, to, we have to determine what matches are the ones happening and which one we're going to feature stream. So yeah. uh, we're going to take a few minutes, guys, to get set for round number three. But make sure to get on social media. Hashtag DHS15. And when we come back, we're going to start the third round of the tournament. Stay